Hey everybody, it's Andrew Escobar here back with another review and today I'm going to be reviewing the TrendNet TEG-S80G. Now this is a gigabit switch and it does follow the green movement in terms of switches, meaning that straight off the bat as a standard feature it can reduce up to 70% of power by turning off power to ports that are not used on the switch and detecting the length of the wires connected to the switch to determine how much power needs to be put through a single port. So that's straight off the bat what it means by green when it has that in the box. So um, it is an eight port switch, that's the box itself, and there's some details on the back, but no one wants to look at a box, it's just a box. So this is what you really want to see. This is the switch itself. And overall, I gotta say straight up, it's very nice. Very, very nice. It is a solid metal construction. It is not plastic at all. When you feel this thing, you can tell it's super solid built. It is incredibly, incredibly well made. So I know some people don't like the TrendNet brand, but I've never had TrendNet before. And on my first reactions for this brand, I gotta say I'm very impressed. Now, this thing, as I said before, does have eight ports. And let me tell you a few things about this switch that makes it a good switch. First off, it is a gigabit switch. Each port can do one gigabit per second. But this is also a full duplex capable switch, which means that the one gigabit speed pertains to upload and download, technically meaning that each port on this switch can do 2 gigabits per second total, meaning that this thing, in all, with all 8 ports, if you were to max out the bandwidth that this can do, is 16 gigabits per second. So you may be asking yourself, well, why would I need something that fast? Well, this I got for LAN parties. If you're considering a LAN party, you may want to hold off on the idea of a router. What you really want is a switch because switches deal with LAN networks while routers are really more so in tune to connecting LANs to WANs. So but that, that's more so pertaining to enterprise equipment. Your standard home router is in fact a switch, a router, and a firewall all in one. But it's not always a good thing because although your standard home router does all that, it's an all-in-one, it's not going to be really great at any particular thing. It's kind of like all season tires on a car. Yeah, they'll work in snow and in rain, but you know, a winter tire is always going to be better in winter and a summer tire is always going to be better in summer. So this is, this is specifically for land, right? And as you can tell, I've got some cables hooked up to it already to show you. Uh, these are all Category 7 cables. Um, for those of you who don't know what Category 7 cables are, I do have a video explaining the differences between categories and RJ45 cables. But that's not why we're here. We're here because I want to show you what it all looks like. As you can see, I have different color cables for every port. And you'll notice there's only seven cables and that port 8 is still open. Let me tell you why that is. With a switch, you can in fact put internet on the switch. How you do so is actually quite simple with this switch. This switch is unmanaged, which means that it is easy to set up because everything sets up for you, basically. All you have to do is plug an RJ45 cable from an open port, a single open port, to a single open port on your router. And what that does is the router that has internet connected to it will then give internet to everything connected to the switch. Granted, in order to do that, you are giving up one port to do that if you want internet on your switch, which means an eight port switch with internet on it means you only have seven usable ports to connect to computers or any other device you want to be on your LAN network. So this feature, the, the switch has some good aesthetics to it in terms of its functionality. So. You'll notice, and I don't know if I can get a very good clear picture, this is about as close as I can get, sorry guys. There's the light for power, and you'll notice there's two LEDs for every input. Basically, the LED, one LED is going to tell you if something is connected 
to the port. This means there's a connection on the back of the port from the switch to an actual device, an end device. And the other LED is going to tell you whether it's running at half duplex or full duplex. Now to go over again what that means, half duplex means you can only send or receive data like one at a time, right? It's either you can only send it at one, at one period or you can only receive. So you can't do it both at the same time. That's half duplex. And a lot of devices, whether you know it or not, do run on half duplex. Full duplex means you can be sending and receiving data at the same time. That is the difference between half and full. So having full duplex is always very nice to have on a switch or any device in general. So um, I do believe this said something like it could stand up to 90% humidity. And you may be asking yourself, well, what does that actually mean? Well, it actually does refer to humidity, meaning that, you know, in the room that this is stored in, it can handle up to that. Now, if you're doing this at your house, you shouldn't be having 90% humidity in your house to begin with. You shouldn't even have close to 50. But if you did, it shouldn't matter. This is passively cooled. There is no fans to keep it cool. Which you may think to yourself, well, if I'm running full duplex and the full capabilities of each port, wouldn't it get hot? Yeah, it'll get a little hot. But it's made to withstand those temperatures in the first place. So I have tested this with multiple computers, and I do get some incredible speeds on this thing with these cables and this switch in general. Now, there are some models of this where the power supply... Well, let's first off show you really quick how this one works. As you can see, there's a little circular plug. You plug that in, and the actual AC to DC adapter is on the plug itself. Now, that's how this model works. You can get models like this where the AC DC adapter is built into the switch, making it so that the cable itself is just a cable and saves room on your... Uh, power adapters or power surge protectors or power strips. It just saves room, but I didn't get that model. Now, you also might be thinking, well, how much does a switch like this cost? Well, I got it on M-Wave for 30 bucks. I was originally going to get it on Newegg, but Newegg was a good 10, 20 bucks more expensive. So I figured I'll take my chances with the M-Wave, and they did a fantastic job getting this here to me. And all the cables you see, all the Category 7 cable. If you're going to get a Category 7 cable, get it on Newegg. That's the cheapest place to get it. So they're all nice and colored. So that way I can identify, you know, which lead is going to which end device. And they are stiff cables, so I can do this. Normally the cable would bend and flop over, but not these cables. So... Other than that, there's not too much else to the switch. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. No. It is made in China, but don't let that bother you. A lot of, there are some good products that come from China. But, basically, if you're looking for a home switch, you may be thinking, well, what about Linksys or... D-Link, what about them? I know those brands because those brands are much more common than TrendNet. Well, here's the thing. I don't go through all the details and all the features that this thing has. I will provide a link in the description. Check it out. You'll come to find that this switch actually has a few more features than the more expensive brands that come from, or the more expensive models that come from D-Link and Linksys. So keep that in mind. But as far as networking hardware goes, it's, it's pretty cool. I think I said that a little too much, but I, you get the point. So anyway, that is the little review of this. Normally I would plug it up and show you the lights, but I don't have any devices to connect right now. So other than that, yeah, get it. It, it is a wonderful, wonderful device. And, you know, it's, it's not only just for LAN parties and stuff like that. If you have a lot of devices that you just want to have wired instead of wireless, especially with security issues, man, 
wireless devices, people can freaking sniff your data coming through the wireless spectrum. And you don't want that. A solid wire is always going to give you better performance, better response time, and better security. So if you wanted a wired and you don't, let's say your router already has four ports, because that's what they give you. So you got AT&T or Comcast and the router slash modem slash firewall slash switch, because they're all in ones. They only got four ports. And you think, man, that's not enough. You get one of these. You can have like four of these if there's four ports. Okay, you plug one of these up to one of each port, and you got tons more ports to use. And you know, you, you would think just, you know, one of these switches would be enough. But if you need more, you could do it. Yeah. So, and I guess there's another feature that this thing has that called uplinking. And I don't exactly know what that means. So you might want to look that up. It could be a useful feature to you. Now, some of you may be thinking, can I connect a switch to a switch so that I can have more ports on my LAN network like that? I think you can, although not entirely sure. I don't have enough of these to test that theory out. But I'm sure you could probably find the answer on the internet somewhere if you Google it. Anyway, guys, that's that's all there is to this review, and thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, rate, subscribe, show your friends, all that good stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video.